Hi, welcome. We have Nadine Nevitt, who I'm so excited to introduce because she is a local Vancouver textile artist and we love our artists in the city. And she has been at our swaps and or pillow talk. I can't remember which one exactly, but was um, brought her pillows. Which one, Paige? The first one. The very the first, first one. Yeah. Oh, what's the first one? Cool. Yeah. And both Paige and I have one of her pillows in our houses and they're really, really beautiful. Anyway, we wanted to find out from Nadine um, how, you know, you work from home already, but how has life changed a little bit um, in terms of business with COVID-19? Um, well, I have my own business, so I'm usually in the studio, so that's changed a little bit. And um, now I'm working from home, which... I did a little bit before, but now it's more permanent. Um, business has like definitely transferred. So part of the businesses that I work with um, are retail and they're having to go online and, and shift that way. And then some of the businesses I work with uh, require photography because I do that as well. And so a lot of times, um, yeah, we're not allowed to do e-commerce on body model shots. Um, getting together in the studio is not possible so uh, while I have a little bit of extra time I've taken some of the scrap fabric and I've started to create some masks um, with the supplies that I had and instead of pillows being the main focus for my business I'm now transferring over to um, supporting some local people and yeah making these for everyone so it's been really fun to reconnect with my community as well as offer something that I didn't know was so popular, um, but is, yeah, is a great thing. Uh, you have so many creative and beautiful friends that are interconnected in, the, in, your, in various ways with business. Are you seeing that they're experiencing similar changes too? Um, yes, I would say a lot of the murals that they would work on normally and um, collaborations that are, more installation focused or interior projects um, because I have friends kind of in traditional art forms as well as applied graphics. So anything to do with like putting art on product and selling that way. Um, yeah, everyone's a bit slower in that way. But uh, I think one thing that we're starting to see a lot of is help with businesses online and creating beautiful graphics for rebrands. This is a great time for all businesses to get a facelift and try something new. Um, and we're requiring less on photography and more on, on visual graphics. So uh, we've been busy that way and we've been able to kind of navigate the shift, but I think it is un unknowing what's gonna happen um, going forward. And I think that's the scariest part, but for the most part, we're doing the best that we can to support other people and just stay um, connected and shout each other out and make people aware of all these different creators and makers um, so we can use each other's services. I think that's been really positive during this time. And how does the um, the website development work? Who do you reach out to? Um, well, local stores have been reaching out for people like myself to either, if we can't photograph something, create illustrations for it to represent the product online. Um, yeah. We've been just trying to network. So if you're a really great backend developer or you're a web designer or you're an application um, more in the tech side or you're a painter, um, everyone's just kind of using each other's resources and asking for help I think is really important during this time. So um, everyone's just trying to get together. And, and if I do well online selling some of my products, um, there's no way I wouldn't support, you know, who's going to be creating that site. So yeah, everyone's just kind of banding together. And I think the, the community is really strong right now, which I think is, yeah, a great, a great thing. So that's so creative what you're doing. If, if you can't photograph something, you draw it. I love that. Um, exactly. Yeah. And that cool. What about um, the, the masks you've been creating? Yeah, so I can show you, um, I have a couple of things beside me. Um, so these are the pillows, which um, I've been doing for, I guess about four years now, um, which I've sold in some local boutiques here in Vancouver, some in Ontario where I'm from originally. 
um, so I do all the illustration by hand or, and then I transfer it into a digital concept. So I'm always working on textiles and also creating this in different styles for other businesses and companies. Um, that's usually what I do. And then with the leftover fabric, um, and you can find a lot of these patterns really accessible online right now. And I uh, just tweaked one that I found on Pinterest and took the fabric that people seem to, to like in, um, in the interior and created these kind of reversible masks. I'm waiting on elastic. It's been really hard and challenging to source, um, but I have some arriving today, so I'll be able to put out a new batch. And so when it's finalized, um, you kind of have two ear, ear loops and then you have like a neck strap. And yeah, they seem to be fitting men and women, although I have a lot of floral and more feminine prints. And then I'm gonna do a smaller size for kids. Um, Cause someone mentioned as a mom, when we go back to school and hopefully that's sooner rather than later, um, there might be a requirement for wearing those more frequently. So I think this is something that we'll have as a staple in our wardrobe, unfortunately going forward. Um, similar to like Tokyo where um yeah some of the street style that we've been seeing so have you seen the, uh, that i've been i think i've we've oh sorry have you seen that the instead of a bikini the trikini which is the no. <laughs> mask matches the bikini oh my gosh <laughs> it's gonna be on the runway i know if it hasn't been already we're gonna we're going to see some trends um i know they're hard to get a hold of and I don't know to what degree they actually keep you safe but I think it's something better than nothing um and that there's lots of I can provide a list to everyone of all the different people making them in the city um and That'd so we'll see them uh so you can't, if you can't get one from myself you can get someone something from someone of my friends that are doing them as well how much are they uh I'm selling these ones for 25 and I think the range I've seen online from everyone, people are donating them for free. And some people are selling them between the 15 and 40. So there's quite a range. There's kind of a wide breadth of color. Mine are really bright and fun. Um, some people are doing just simple black, gray. There should be something for everyone. Um, yeah, I would say a lot of the major, or not even major, but um, local designers are, are just stopping production and clothing right now, going through what they can and asking their seamstresses to kind of go through that process of making a few at least with some of those extra fabric bits that are hanging out. I love that they're reversible. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was fun. It's a request from my mom. She's always like, not everything will go with this outfit. She loves fashion more than I do. <laughs> came into it honestly um so the i guess yeah. the final question we've got for you is amidst all this what for you is the silver lining um i think it's nice to take some time even though um i find it i like involve myself in a lot of projects that the year i get really excited and i'm working cross-functionally um Previous to this uh, virus happening, I felt very burnt out and um, it's been wonderful to have just a little bit of downtime space and quiet reflection to kind of rejuvenate and think about, you know, what I love to do, what lights me up and um, making this simple mask and sharing them and creating product and art for people is what completely fulfills me. And so this was just, um, yeah, uh, uh, I don't know a great time to reflect on that and sometimes I pump out so many designs for other people but what do I want to create for myself so I'm excited about some projects I'd love to start a kids book um, so I'm going to be working on that and just take the time that I have to yeah show up for other people support local as much as possible and then also yeah just be creative I think I, I was missing that so um, I'm happy to slow down a little bit and I'm not sure everyone feels the same way, but for me, that's, uh, that's a silver lining for sure. That's so cute. Cause you're so creative that you were missing creative. 
Yeah, creative, there's like a few ways of being creative. So you could be creative for others and help execute other people's vision. And that's why I'm usually hired to like um, solve a creative problem. And I love doing that. Um, but then showing up creatively for yourself and what does that look like? What do I even like? And I'm designing for a lot of different people. So just taking a second to pick up the pen and draw something just because I want to draw it is um, something I don't give myself as often. So I think a lot of creatives are just able to have a bit more space to do that. So I'm hoping we see some really beautiful artwork come out of this. And yeah, just knowing that there are so many local businesses that we should support, not just in times when we can't access overseas or Amazon as easily. We should always be thinking of our local businesses. I think that's something everyone can consider. Restaurant, artists, yeah, made locally, handmade. So I'm excited for that. Great. Well, excited to see your book and uh, when that comes out. And thank you so much, <laughs> Nadine. Thanks, Yeah, Nadine. everyone, stay safe. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Sure. I'll chat soon.